Hi, welcome to Author's Life again. This is tip number four. This week, I want to share just a few small tips that won't take very long for you to listen to and maybe make notes to. I'm also dealing with some lighting issues at the moment, so I'm going to try to sit back and keep that glare off of my face. In this tip number four, we're still talking about <clears throat> writing. You've gotten to the bench that we talked about last week and you're writing and a few little tips for what you can do as you're writing through your manuscript. One is, and I learned this with the first publisher I was with, and I've learned this even further, doing formatting for myself and others, your manuscript needs to be one continuous flow, not pages, no page numbers, no breaks, one continuous flow. Now, some within that continuous flow just you know add in chapter two and keep going, chapter three and keep going. I like to set mine up as they are chapters. I'll go to the next page, but I'll put a center heading, chapter whatever with the title of that chapter if there is one. And I center that and I space down and I, I set it up like it's in a book, although it is one continuous file. Now, one thing I've learned through being formatted and formatting is that it's very helpful if you put space between your chapters. In some programs, and I'm not familiar with every formatting program, but if your chapters are just all stuck together, when they go into the program, the formatter has to separate all that and get it in the right place. But if they are separated far enough, they will occur or show up as separate chapters and fall in to the chapter where they're, they're supposed to be already without a lot of uh, rigmarole to get it in its right place. So for ease of formatting, you might keep that in mind that you might even wanna put um, you know, half a page or something, at least some space between your chapters. I'm about to format a book of my own that I am setting up the way I normally set it up, as I just described a minute ago. And I'm going to see how that will fall in to the program I use. I may have to make some adjustments if I see that that's not working as well as other things. No one's ever mentioned it to me when they formatted for me. And I just take whatever's given to me and format it without making the um, author adjust. I just wiggle it around and get it into the right spot. But it is important that you have one long continuous uh, manuscript, not broken into separate chapters, um, no page breaks, and no page numbers, because those are going to be decided in the formatting process where the page numbers land. Also, um, just remember those spaces between chapters. Um, another thing is you might know what size book you're looking at publishing. Six by nine is very common. I tend to use five by eight or five and a half by eight and a half. That's common as well. For me, it depends on how many pages are in my book. If it's a hundred page book, then I'm gonna use a smaller size. If it's a larger book, I'm gonna use maybe a bigger size. I've never gone be beyond five and a half by eight and a half. But like I said, six by nine is very common. You may or may not know this. Now, if you're of my generation and didn't grow up with computers, you may have had to learn, or maybe you haven't learned yet, that you can go to the top of Word, if you're working in Word, and look at layout. And then it'll let you choose which size book you wanna look at. And so in my case, I'll choose five and a half by eight and a half or whatever their numbers are that are close to that. Then it shows my book on my screen, my manuscript as that size. And it tells me how many pages I'll have publishing a book in that size. Now, if I'm juggling so that I have enough pages, I might go down a little bit in the size book. I've never gone below five by eight, but a book that fits well into five by eight might be way too thin for a six by nine. If you've got a bigger novel, you can go bigger, but it will tell you how many pages you're going to have very, very close. It's not going to necessarily include your front or back pages, depending on if you have those set up in your manuscript or not. It, it'll be very close though. It'll give you a good idea of how many pages your book will be in whatever size you're looking at. And that is very helpful for you as the author to know what to tell your formatter when the time comes, what size book you want because, and, and your cover designer, because they have to know the size, the page count of the book to create the cover to fit. There's some wiggle room in there 
with pages. You know, you can be some pages more, some pages less. It'll still fit in that cover, but you go too far either way and the cover has to be redesigned. So it is helpful for you to look ahead under layout. I'm trying to get out of the light here and um, see how many pages you'll have in which number and which size book. The other thing that can help with that is if you are already deciding the font you want and the size font you want. Uh, if you choose a larger font, of course, that's going to change your page number. Or smaller, it's going to make fewer pages. So you want to have an idea. Again, in the process of formatting, that might shift a little bit. And <clears throat> front pages or back pages or any padding pages might change it a little bit. But basically, you're going to know. For instance, um, when I have been formatting a manuscript and the page count there may be someone's revising and the page count gets bigger or smaller than what their book cover already designed is, I will adjust maybe line spacing or font size to make it um, within the frame of pages that they can still use their same cover and not have to have another one made. Those are things to think of ahead of time. Depending on what you're writing, you may want larger print. Um, in one of my books, my series of The Old Woman, I did make sure the uh, size of the font was just a little bit bigger than normal and spacing a little bit easier to read. Now, all ages and both men and women have read that, but I felt for some of the older women who might be reading that, um, the larger might be a little bit better for them. I did not go to full large print, which I have forgotten exactly what size that is. I'd have to look at it again, 16 or 18 is the is the large print. I did not go that high. I went a little over 12 point, a little over 12 point in font. And you know, different fonts look larger or smaller or wider or thinner, taller or shorter. So decide on these three things as you go to have a continuous document, to not have page numbers, to leave some space between your chapters, makes it easier in formatting less confusion for your book. Check the layout tab so you can see what your book will look like in different sizes. And if you want to change the font or spacing to achieve a certain page number, these are things that are very easy to do while you're writing or when you're finished to go back and check. Because you can finish your whole book, check layout and see, okay, how will this fit into this size or that size? Those are just a few tips to use while you're writing. And I hope between last week and now, you have been able to get some writing done. I have. I'm pretty much on schedule. I'd like to be a little farther ahead of schedule, but I am on schedule. And I hope these little tips will help you as you're writing this week. Remember, you can always change chapter titles and book title until the very end. So you can have a working title and working chapter titles that you write in, but they are not set in stone until it's formatted and put in PDF or on your cover. So you have wiggle room to experiment while you're working on this book of yours. And I hope you have a very nice week working on it, keeping these little tips in mind. And I hope they have helped you, especially if you're a brand new writer. I hope these tips are helping you. Thank you for listening and I'll catch you next week.